This is Fifi. We're here to see the vet. Yeah, no problem. Just take a seat over there for me. In Thank Richmond, you. Eva, Adam and their son Jacob have brought in their injured spoodle Fifi to see Scott. Fifi had a little accident and we went to emergency vet yesterday and it's um, highly possible that, sh that the leg is broken. So we're here to see Scott. We are really worrying because we can see that it's not, it's not right because she's like crying. Hello guys, you're all right? Oh dear, Fifi, you're looking very sad today and sporting a very interesting sock. So I think that tells me something. Let's have a chat, shall we guys? In you come. We pray that Dr. Scott will put her back on her four legs as soon as possible. Tell me what's happened. She fallen down the sofa. She fell off the sofa? Yes. Okay. And this is the temporary bandage emergency one. Poor little Fifi. She's such a sad little shadow of her former self. Normally she's the bouncy, happy, white, fluffy dog like my dog Scully. She looks very sad and dilly. Now is it very sore? Yeah, she's quite tender just me touching that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Is enough for her no, to flinch. No, she didn't want us to, to touch it at all. Well, I think probably what's best is if we just do a little conscious x-ray. Yeah. And from that, we can okay. work out exactly what's going on and what we're going to do about it. Sound good, Jakob? Hey? Yeah? yeah? Have you fallen off the sofa ever? Let's just check this arm. Just to be sure. Yeah, that that's good. That one's good. Excellent. So hopefully, Fifi's leg will be good too. Yeah? Okay then, Fifi, let's pop you downstairs. Okay, guys, if you grab a seat out front, I'll take an x-ray with your little girl and then uh, we can have a look at the x-ray, yeah? Okay. All right, say bye-bye. Bye. See you in a second. We really worried what uh, Scott will say and what's the condition of the leg as well and what will happen. All right, Reagan. Nurse Reagan will be assisting Scott with the x-ray. Good girl. Taking Fifi downstairs, it's very easy just to pop her leg under the x-ray machine with me all gowned up in lead. X-rays. And we'll see what lies beneath. Wow. Oh, gosh, yikes. St. Margaret's practice. Hi, Beata, how are you? Fine, thanks. Concerned owner Beata and Somebody her pet hedgehog Luta have arrived for well, an appointment with vet thing. Tina. And Tina will be with you in a minute. Thank you. Okay. She has a small bump on her head and I want it to be checked that there's nothing wrong, you know, just to be on the safe side. I really love her. I can't imagine that there is something wrong with her again. Morning, Beata. Hi, Tina. How are you? Hi. Fine, thanks. Come on, bring Thank Luta to great. <laughs> the love Beata has for Luta is comparable to any other relationship any owner has with their dog or cat or parrot. It's, it's just so special and it's, it's very touching, actually. All right, what's going on with Luta today? I just want you to please do a checkup because there's a small bump on her head. It's very slowly growing, but I think it just to be on the safe side, you know, just yes. have a look at it and, and then try to figure out what is it. Okay, let's get her out and have a little look. Hello, honey. <gasps> oh, she says I'm tired. Oh, oh come on. on. Luta. Come on. Are you going to let go of the blanket, honey? Luta's come in today quite a bit hissy, um, which I think is more related to the practice and the smell of the practice and a remembering of her previous time here. Okay, maybe bring her out with the towel and when we put her down, <laughs> she might let it go. I don't think. Here we go, honey. Come, we can be best friends again. <laughs> Beata is concerned about her baby and we need to put her concerns to rest today. Maybe she did bump her head or something like I, that? I don't know. So what I would like to do is to give her a little bit of mm. gas again mm. like last time so that she can let me sample it and then I can make a smear and see what's in there and if it's something we have to worry about. Mm. Any lump or bump that you find on any animal is a concern. There you go. We need to make sure that it's not something nasty that can spread. So we need to take the relevant steps and today we'll be sampling it first to see if it does need removal or not. Say so bye, Mom. My love. Oh, we'll look after her. I know. Bye. Come 
around here, guys, and take a look at that. Back at the Richmond practice, Eva, Adam, and their son Jacob are finding out the results of the x-rays on little Fifi's injured leg. So this is one bone or the other two bones? Two bones. The radius and the ulna are both in the forelimb, in the forearm, and they've both been broken. So it's an extreme fracture for just falling off a couch. But the thing is with these little dogs, they have really brittle bones, and just a unfortunate fall can lead to a fracture like this. From little jump, she, she ended up with like proper broken leg. So, you know, no one expected this. So will, will the bandage will be okay for it? Will it, will it will be, be enough? enough? Unfortunately not, no. What you can see there is the muscles have contracted and we've got overlap of the fracture site. So this will heal very badly if it isn't fixed internally. So we're going to have to use a mixture of pins and plates Lots of hardware. It's basically a bit of DIY with a pulse, I'm afraid, for little mm -hmm. Fifi. But it does need to be done. Yeah. So your little dog needs surgery. It's, it's no fixing. good, is it? OK, guys, well, I'll take care of your little fluff ball. And you guys head home, and we'll see you a little bit later. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Thank you. See Bye -bye. ya. Thank you. Bye. We are really, really worried, and I hope everything goes well. Fingers crossed. Good girl, we'll fix you up. Here we will. Hey? Here we will. Hi, honey. Hello. All right. Here's Luta. Oh. Okay, Hi, Luta. so she's got a little bump on her eye. So, okay. we just need to have a check. At St Margaret's, Nurse Sam is assisting Tina with the procedure on Luta, the African pygmy hedgehog. Hey, look at you. Hey. You can actually see the bump on her left eye while she's curled up. Bit pink in colour. We need to figure out if it's a growth or a cyst, and if it is a growth, how nasty that growth could be. Two months ago, a malignant tumour was removed from Luta's uterus. And Tina is now concerned the cancer may have spread. Okay. All right, let's quickly turn it on her back and we can do yep. a quick scan. While we've got her under the general anaesthetic, we're going to quickly do a little ultrasound scan of her abdomen just to check that everything is all right following her previous surgery with us when we removed the tumour from her uterus. So basically I'm looking for big nodules or circles or any large abnormalities. But at the moment, everything looks normal. OK, let's get her cleaned up. At the moment, it's looking pretty good. I can't see anything abnormal. Now Tina is going to take a sample from the suspicious lump that's appeared on Luta's head. We're going to be sticking a needle into the bump to get some material to see if it's infectious, inflammatory, or if it possibly still could be cancer. I looked at the slides and the one slide, there wasn't much on there, which was good, but the second slide, unfortunately, did have a group of cells, which I'm not 100% sure what they are. And we're gonna send it to the lab for them to evaluate it, to let us know if it's something to worry about. I'm gonna pop her in here, in her little safe place. It will Thank be a so. tense few it's days okay. waiting for the pathology results. She's already hissing at me. Hi, honey. Luta will stay at the clinic a little longer, before she can hopefully go home later today. Okay. <laughs> She's quite grumpy. There we go. How did it happen? It's, it's almost too hard to believe. She fell off a sofa. What, and snapped both of the bones in her front leg? Yeah, and she fell onto the floor about a foot, and that's what's happened. Wow. Yeah. In Richmond, Fifi the Spoodle is being prepared for surgery to fix her badly fractured foreleg. Okay, with that dressing off, you can see just how floppy that leg is. Makes you wince, doesn't it? The forelimb of a dog, like the forearm of a person, has got two major bones in it, the radius and the ulna, and both of them help to splint and give stability 
to that limb. And in this case, we have both of them broken, so it's literally flapping in the breeze. It's horrific. Such a fine limbed little thing, isn't she? So delicate. Mm. So we had to fix you right up. Assisting Scott with the surgery is his new vet, Phoebe, and nurse Nathan. Okay. All right, so nice and gentle there. Oh, poor baby. Hey, good girl. That's it. Fifi will be kept at the clinic and closely monitored overnight to make sure she's well enough to go home. Okay. Oh, that's it. Perfect. Just what you need. Oh, my sweetheart, you're okay. Okay. At St Margaret's, a concerned Beata has returned to be reunited with her beloved pygmy hedgehog. Hello. Hi, hello, ladies. How, How are you? is my tiny baby? My baby's fine. She's in the consulting room. Are you ready to go see her? Of course. <laughs> Vet Tina has taken some samples from a suspicious lump on the little hedgehog's head, and they've been sent away for testing. I'm holding thumbs that these results come back perfectly normal. I'm not 100% sure, but we will find out, and we will do the best for, for Luta in the end. So she was a very brave girl today. We managed to get a sample from the mass. I've withdrawn as much fluid as possible and I made a little slide and I looked at mm. it on the microscope. One of the slides does have a cluster of cells mm. that I'm not sure what they are. I'm just gonna send it to the lab to see what they think it is. And then we take it from there whether we need to watch it. We need to see if it's gonna fill up with fluid again and we need to redrain it or possibly look at removing it. And the lab should give us our results in about a week or so, so I will give you those as soon as they're in. I don't want to think about the sample. You know, it's always you have to be very positive and until it's... It, no, I don't think there is, no. There is no problem with her, I know. Bye. Daisy, Daisy, you're gonna be all right. The next day in St. Margaret's, Royston right. and Laura have made an emergency appointment for their very sick pug, Daisy. We noticed her a bit lethargic and she wasn't really herself. She was panting a lot, she started shaking. So it was sort of by early evening, we got more and more nervous because she's just not herself at all. Uh, so we need to get it sorted. Hello there, guys. Hi. Hi, Dr. 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 Hi, Dr
I have complained and begged them to neuter their dogs sooner. They know that. It's something they're very concerned about because Laura in the past, being from Colombia, had some bad experiences with vets, found it hard to trust them, and Royston as well, incredibly nervous about the dogs that he loves so much, worried about the anaesthetic, and will they wake up from it? So they have held off from doing a spay, but unfortunately, that has turned around to bite them because if an animal's spayed, they don't have a uterus, hence, they can't have pyometra. There's been anaesthetic issues in the past. There's been concerns yeah. regarding how your dogs have been treated in the past that you've been so frightened of doing it. Yeah. But unfortunately, because of that fear, we're here right now, which is a real shame. Yeah. Yes. I've cancelled maybe two or three times the day before when she has to go for the operation to be spayed. Just through nerves. I get nervous like weeks ahead of the time. And I know that you guys are super yes. worried. I know that's the reason why we've yes. been unable to get you in the building to do it, but it is something we desperately need to do, and now she actually feels unwell. Yes, definitely. Come on then, I know you love them very much. I just need to remove that excess baggage is what I need to do, yes. Say bye, mummy. Bye, Michael. We'll see you later on. See you later. Bye. We are worried, but we, in the same way, we think it's yeah, it it's makes fine. me slightly less worried. Yes, yes, yes. In Scott's yes. hands. Yes. Um, but still very worried. Yeah. Very worried. Sort you out, don't we, okay? Sweet. Sweet. Yes. Phoebe's next patients aren't at any of the clinics. They're out on the streets of London. Today I'm off to the Strand in central London to help out with a charity called Dogs on the Street, run by a lovely lady called Michelle. Stands out. Really looking forward to it. Oh, we've got a visitor. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Nice to meet you. Oh. Thanks so much for coming along today. No problem. This is where. You're going to be today. Okay. Can't wait to get started. Right, let's get the yeah. tables out. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Dogs on the Street is a not-for-profit voluntary-run service providing free vet care, training, grooming, all the essentials for the homeless community with their dogs that live out on the streets in central London. We're here with a team of vets, vet nurses, a trainer, grooming van, and also volunteers, so that when they come along, everything's there for them to access. Hiya. How are you? How are you? You are right. I've come to see you for Fizz. Hello, Fizz. Phoebe's first and client is Michael, number with 15-year-old Fizz. I'm not really sure what to expect. I've never done anything like this before, and it's really different to private practice. You were here a couple of weeks ago, is yes. that right? Yes. These are very vulnerable people that have absolutely nothing and maybe it will be hard to see them not maybe able to care for their dogs in the way that they would like. I'm hoping that we'll be able to give them the best possible care today. Right, should we get her on the scales yes. then? On you get, Fizz. Come on then. Oh. About 24.5. So she's put on about 200 uh, grams oh. in a week. In a week? Oh. <gasps> Their diet is so inconsistent. It's just basically what they're in, you know, they can actually get their hands on to, to feed. And, and again, the homeless people go without. They provide their dog more than they do themselves. The That's all I'm giving them on the dog chews. Is that every day? Yeah. OK. Yeah. So those have a lot of fat. Yeah. So if you were giving her that, then you need to give her less of her normal food. And I would say no human food, if you can. The dogs are their life, you know, the dogs are their children, their family, they are the most loyal fur baby, as we call them, that they have. And, you know, the, the love goes so deep, it's so hard to describe. But, yeah, they just mean the world. Uh -huh. Hi, Gary, I'm you Phoebe. Are... I'm Next Phoebe. up nice to meet is you. Gary yeah. with his Lola. best friend, Lola. Lola. Yeah. And how yeah. long have you had her? Five years now. Wow. Best five years of my life. Oh. Lola is my Staffordshire Bull Terrier. She was one year old, she was found abandoned in a flat. And I just moved into premises from the streets. I wanted the dog because the resettlement team thought it'd help me settle. And uh, they went to Batsy with me and we chose Lola. And I've had her ever since. Yeah, I just love her. <laughs> in you come, Poppet. Come on, Lolly. 
Good girl. I haven't seen Lola before, so right. can you tell me a bit about her? She had the elbow dysplasia. Elbow she, dysplasia. That's what they said, yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah, at the um, Blue Cross. Mm. And, um... So that's why um, dogs on the street have been giving her hydrotherapy sessions? Yeah, she's been having hydrotherapy. She's got three more left. How many has she had already? Seven. She's had seven? Yeah. And how has she been doing? She likes it, but she'll only do it if she's got a tennis ball in her mouth. <laughs> Elbow dysplasia is basically an abnormality of the cartilage in the elbow joint, which means that it doesn't develop properly. Should we just yeah. see how she walks okay. then? And then you can get fragments of bone falling off and secondary arthritic changes. So it's quite nasty and it's quite painful for the dogs. Can you just walk her just to the end and back yeah. a few times? Okay. So to examine Lola, I trotted her up and down to see if I could see any lameness in those front legs, but she was walking really well. <laughs> She's not limping at all, is she? No. All right then, Puppet. We'll have a little feel of those elbows as well. Yeah. It's all right, Lol. Look at that. Yeah, she'd have cried if you'd done that really? a couple of months ago, yeah. Yeah, she's got a really good range of motion on that elbow joint. Yeah, she she's never not used painful to. at all. No. Good girl. Seeing cases like Lola and Gary is what's so inspiring. He's helping her with her elbow dysplasia. She was the one who inspired him to get off the street in the first place because he wanted to do it for her. Oh, you want to see more? The scales weren't lying, Lola. <laughs> they weren't. It's just another example of such a loving bond between an animal and their owner. And it's what inspires me as well to go into work every day because you just want to strengthen that bond and keep it alive for as long as possible. Good girl. No, it's not more treats. <laughs> She's through mad. Bye. Bye. Lolly, come on. <laughs> Good girl. Hey, Sam. You all right? Hello. How are you? Good. Daisy's not so great, though. Poor little thing. She's got pyometra. Oh. Having your baby. That's not nice. Mm. So she feels like a little pug-shaped hot water bottle at the moment. So mm. she's just not well, are you, baby? At the St Margaret's practice, Scott and Nurse Sam are about to start surgery on sick pug Daisy. Mummy, you're a much more bouncy little, little girl, aren't you? The little dog has an infected uterus, and it's making her extremely unwell. I feel for Royston and Laura because they feel very very guilty that they didn't heed my advice about neutering. Obviously, there's risks, but... Yeah, and also being a pug, as you know, there's, there's risks on top mm. of that. And then she's a sick pug, which is even worse. Daisy is not in the best place for surgery. She's panting, she has a fever, and also she's a pug, so she's not built for breathing very well. She's got a tiny little flat nose and a flat face. So all the issues associated with breathing in that breed Compounded by illness means that this will be a risky anaesthetic. Spin around. There we go, sweetheart. Good. But seconds later... Oh, my God. Daisy's in trouble. Okay. Even despite our best efforts, she stops breathing. Can, Can you grab that drip bag and just bring it through? Vet nurse Lily has been called in as an extra pair of hands. Can I just put this under a towel? Yeah. Despite all my tricks of the trade and then even some drugs, she still continues to not breathe. But what's then worse, her heart starts to slow down. Can, Can you, you grab that drip bag and just bring it through? Should we get the monitor? Yeah, yeah. and the Did monitor as well. At St Margaret's, five-year-old pug Daisy has crashed under anaesthetic. <sighs> Daisy was in trouble. She'd stop breathing and with her heart slowing, we needed to make some very smart decisions very quickly. Just get some adrenaline at the ready. Quick as you can, Sam. I asked for some adrenaline to get her heart beating stronger and we give it to Daisy. Do you want to give her some IV? Yeah. Uh, SBO2 81, going upwards. Okay, heart rate's much stronger now. Daisy's heart rate is responding well to the adrenaline. So about one in five. But she's still not breathing. In a good position. Come on. There we go. That was her. That was her. That's her again. Yep. Okay, that's good. Okay, so just put her up to put her up to two. 
This is why anaesthetics are risky. This is why we want to do spays on healthy dogs, not sick ones. There we go. Our heart rate's nice and consistent now, so she just needs to breathe in that gas and then we should be in a good position. Well, well done, everyone. She's back now. Gosh, she took a sweet time, didn't she? Mm -hmm. My heart was in my gut because it is like doing a procedure on someone's child. A uh, little Daisy here and uh, we nearly lost her. Yeah. It's almost where their concerns are realised, you know. Yeah. They were worried about an anaesthetic. Well, for the last five minutes, so have we. So. <laughs> Mm. I don't know if I breathed in that time. <laughs> no. My heart was down here. <laughs> Although, thankfully, Mum was beating at times. Shares was trying not to. That was too much. Too close. Too close. And for people that, you know, talked about how much they trust you and how much faith they have in you, and then that happens, oh, it just, it's even worse. There we go. Now she breathes. Back to those huggy, abnormal breathing ways. <coughs> to see this pug make those lovely puggy noises on recovery was music to my ears. Come on then, Trouble. Let's get you all snugly. Hey. Daisy will sleep off the anaesthetic and will hopefully be able to go home with owners okay. Royston and Laura later right. today. Two rules, heart keeps beating and lungs keep breathing. Yeah, deal? Do you think she would take a little treat? Oh yeah. <laughs> What's that? Here you go. Ooh. Oh, yes. <laughs> Back in the centre of town, Phoebe is helping the Dogs on the Street charity give free vet checks to the homeless. <laughs> so you do notes on um, all your patients? Yes. Yeah, everyone has one of these. They have all the notes written on it. Let's go and get Gizmo then. Okay. <laughs> Good boy. Hi. Hiya. Gizmo's come from his checkup for his stitches. His stitches? So he was castrated yes, then? Yes, he was, yeah. A couple of weeks ago now, was yeah. it? Oh, he's really friendly. Phoebe's last client of the day is Francesca, with her one and a half year old staffy Gizmo. Where did you get him from? He was rescued because he was badly ill treated. Oh, poor oh. thing. He was quite young when I got him, but he was very badly abused. He was very thin, very badly ill treated. And I went in and took him, and that was it. I love him to bits. Yeah, he's my little baby. He's the only man in my life. My little dog. You can see his little wound there. It's looking really good. I'd had him done because he is quite boisterous and hyperactive. So he's come to have his stitches checked just to make sure that they're dissolving in that properly. That's healing really nicely. Oh, good. Yeah, really happy with that. Yeah. It's holding closed. Yeah. It's not painful. It's not inflamed. And hopefully his hormones should settle down a bit now yeah. that he's been castrated. You'd never have guessed by the way that Gizmo bounced around the uh, the tent that he'd had an operation two weeks previously. I think Francesca probably has a hard job keeping him still at times. You've got a lovely little dog here. I've fallen in love with him. He's stolen my heart. <laughs> Everybody loves him when he comes here. You can tell just by talking to the owners for a couple of minutes how much their animals mean to them. They're everything to each other. Some of these people could maybe go into accommodation, but they'd rather be on the street than give up their dogs. Right, thank you for your help. It was lovely bye to bye. meet you both. Say bye-bye, Gizmo. Bye. Say bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. bye. <laughs> I've had such a good day helping out with dogs on the street. It was definitely more than a vet clinic. It was definitely a community. And you could tell that just by the fact that clients will come back week on week, even if their dogs aren't feeling unwell. Everyone has a bit of a chat. Yeah, it was really nice to see. Oh, that's great. I'll come back soon. Oh, that'd be lovely. We'd have you back anytime. Yeah. anytime. Phoebe was amazing, you know, being it's her first time out here, sort of engaging with the homeless community as well. I think she'd done great. Yeah, bye. Clinic. She's 
return of her breathing now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> back to hug breathing yet again. Yeah. Some sort of broken vacuum cleaner. Daisy has fully recovered from the surgery to remove her infected uterus. You don't even know, do you? What you put us through, all that stress. Unaware of the drama during surgery, Royston and Laura have arrived to pick up their little girl. Since we left, I've been a bag of nerves, just waiting for the phone call. As far as I know, everything went well. I guess we'll find out when we speak to Scott. Hello. <laughs> No. The main cause for her illness, which is that uterus full of pus, is now gone. But I'm very glad to have passed her back to you because she wasn't breathing initially when we gave her the anaesthetic, so the concerns you had regarding the anaesthetic were valid. But then her heart started to slow down a little bit, got a little bit fluttery and hard to hear, so we had to treat her with emergency medication, but thankfully, very quickly, she came back round and uh, she's here to send home with you now. My heart just stops to think that it could have gone the other way, basically. It's a terrible thought. Yeah. But luckily, uh, she came through and yes. we got our baby back, basically. Yes, yes. Oh <laughs> so it's, it's a relief, a good, big relief. Yes. Yes. Daisy will be kept on a course of antibiotics to make sure all infection is completely gone from her body. And then she should make a full recovery. Oh, bye, baby. Okay. All right. So See you later, thank guys. You so much, Doctor. Thank all right. You. Sleep well. You too. Thank all you. Right. Bye, bye bye. Bye bye. See ya. Bye. Hello, sweetheart. How are you? Don't you look better? A day after surgery to fix Fifi's broken leg, the one-year-old Spoodle is ready to go home. Oh, that's a good girl. Look at that waggy tail. Hey. Oh, great girl. Upstairs, Adam and his son Jacob are anxious to see their little girl. I think everything went well, so let's see how she's feeling. Hello. Wow. <laughs> He's your little puppy. Oh, Fifi. The surgery went well, and so that's given the whole leg lovely stability. It will be quite a long road, however. She's going to have six weeks of uh, incarceration, so she'll be quite bored. Mm. I think it's best that she's in a, in a crate or a cage for that period of time. And, of course, no more couches. So we need to try and convince her not to get on couches anymore because we don't know what might happen. Hey, are you looking forward to taking her home? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, did you miss her while she was away? Yeah. Although going home with Adam and Jakob, Fifi is definitely going to be catching up on all those cuddles she's missed. She has to do a lot of healing, a lot of very controlled rest before we re-X-ray. But hopefully at that point, I can go back and see her running around the hills of Richmond. Hopefully she'll be A-OK. -okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> You do not like it, Fior. And I hope that your bump is okay, baby. Everything will be fine. And a week later, Hedgehog Luta's pathology results are back, and Beata and her daughter have come to hear the findings. Two minutes and then everything will be fine, you know? Yes. They're hoping a sample taken from a lump on Luta's face isn't cancerous. Hi, Hi. Hi. How are you? Yeah. Oh, hello, miss. Come, let's go through. Okay, come on. They've had to be very strong this last year. They've gone through a lot with Luta. She's come through a tumour being removed from her uterus and now a scary little bump that we were all worried about. All right, guys, we got some results back and that little bump that we drained has come back benign, which is good news, okay? It's not cancerous. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so it's basically, they've classified it as a cyst. So it's a structure that forms a little bit of fluid that builds up and we just need to keep an eye on it and we need to drain it if needs be. And if it does become a problem, then we can possibly discuss surgery. But if it's not bugging her at all, I see no reason to mm. remove it, okay? She's just amazing. We really love her. I think we are lucky that we have her, whatever happened, that uh, we are lucky that she's still there and she's happy and healthy. She just she's going to sleep. sleep. 
Yeah. Good night, Luta. <laughs> She's really gone to sleep. In Isleworth, Scott is making a very special house call. Well, hello, Hi. sir. How, How are, are you? you? Yeah, good. Hello, Daisy. Hey, dog. Hello. It's six weeks since Daisy was rushed into the clinic with a life-threatening condition. Oh, thank you. I know to see the girl. Scott removed the little pug's infected uterus after a challenging anaesthetic. Thank you. So, she put us all through the ringer. How's she been since the surgery? Much better. Say hello to the doctor, please. Oh. Daisy, oh, come on, don't be rude. Don't do that. You're supposed to say thank you for saving my life. <laughs> she's run around more than before, so, so it's fantastic. She's got a, a, a new lease on life, by the sounds of it. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Can I just have a little look at my handiwork there and just see how things are looking? Can I look at your tummy? Hey, well, that's healed really nicely, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Doctor, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so, for so everything. So, so welcome. I know how much you guys love your dogs. And obviously, this was one of those instances where you put off a decision to, to spay her because you were worried and it actually made things a hell of a lot worse. Yeah. And now, the other two dogs, are we planning yes. on booking them in? Yes, they definitely. 100%. They're yeah. both, both going to get done. Thank you. I think for your sanity and for mine, Let's just get it done. Yeah, yes. For sure. Yes. 100%. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. They have to be done. Sound good? <laughs> no. Oh, Daisy. <laughs> be cooker. Be cooker. It's a very clear no. <laughs> no more surgery. Go away. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, you are a grumpy yes. bugger. And two and a half months after emergency surgery to repair Fifi's broken leg, Scott wants to see how the little spoodle has recovered. Good evening! Hi, Hi. how are you? Thank you very much. Hello, Fifi. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous. How are you? Hey? Doing really well. Oh, good. And not minding the vet coming to visit at home. No, hey? she's so happy. <laughs> very friendly girl. All right, well, let's go in and chat, shall we? No worries. Come in. Cheers. Please come in. And so, how's the 10 weeks? Gone for you. It's been hard, I'm sure, for Fifi. The beginning part was probably, you know, the, the hardest because she had the plaster on, so it was difficult for her to even lie down. Mm -hmm. When we took the plaster off, after two weeks, she started putting pressure on her on her leg, and then she was even happy to run. Wow. Um, so she's been really strong and really good. Well, first thing I noticed when I walked in the door is you can really not tell which leg it is, which is incredible, no, isn't it? Yeah. With her now fully recovered, is she back to sort of her usual jumpy, happy, bouncy self, playing with the kids? When we go for a walk, when she come back, she comes and jump on the sofa and just sleep. <gasps> oh dear, you've put mummy in it there. Jumping on the sofa? No, you can't be doing that. In fact, I've got something to try and stop that from happening. Oi, oi, oi. Do not cross, <laughs> Fifi. You like it? Do not cross. <laughs> She loves it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I haven't got authority, have I, really? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, I can't stop it. No. Oh. You're just saying thank you for the yes. operation. <laughs> Very enthusiastic, thank you. Oh. Luckily, I'm better at fixing legs than I am at dog training, hey? Yeah. No. Yes. I, I, I'm Thank glad you that so she can, much. She can use her foot to sort of hook on to me while she's licking me to death. Hey. Yes. Yes. You're a very good girl. Your leg's fixed and your tongue was never broken, was it? Hey? <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.